self-propelled artillery played an important role during World War II and served as a crucial mobile heavy firepower support weapon. Germany was one of the first countries to recognize the effectiveness of this type of equipment in combat and actively developed it during the early stages of the war. In addition to famous models such as the Bison series of self-propelled artillery, Germany also had a relatively obscure SPG self-propelled artillery at that time. During the Battle of France, the British equipped a significant number of lightweight and agile Vickers MK.VI light tanks. These tanks did not perform well in combat, as their armor, which was less than 10 mm thick, was not only difficult to withstand anti-tank weapon attacks but also had significant tactical flaws. When the British were trapped in the Dunkirk area, the expeditionary force did not intend to easily hand over heavy weapons to the Germans. At least they systematically destroyed the disabled Vickers MK.VI light tanks. After the German occupation of Dunkirk, the astute Germans still managed to collect enough wreckage of Vickers light tanks and successfully assembled a batch of usable chassis by dismantling the available parts. Most of these light tanks were used for stabilization and training in the occupied areas. During the Battle of France, the German-equipped Bison self-propelled artillery performed exceptionally well, solidifying Germany's determination to continue researching related weapons and equipment. However, the problem facing Germany was the lack of sufficient armored chassis for modification work, so a large number of captured tank chassis were used for conversion. Six Vickers MK.VI light tanks were modified at the Alka tank factory. These tanks had their superstructures removed and a top-open fighting compartment was installed at the rear of the tank. Due to the tank's length of only 2.5 meters, the fighting compartment appeared quite large. The front and sides of the fighting compartment were protected by steel armor ranging from 11 to 22 millimeters thick, capable of withstanding attacks from light weapons and shell fragments. Its main gun was a 105 mm L.F.H.16 howitzer, which was a type of howitzer widely used by Germany during World War I. Its performance was inferior to the widely used L.F.H.18 in World War II, but both types of ammunition were compatible. The former had a smaller barrel diameter and no muzzle brake, resulting in a muzzle velocity of only 395 meters per second and a maximum range of only 9,225 meters. Although the German army was equipped with anti-tank ammunition, it could only pose a threat to light tanks and penetrate steel armor of approximately 52 mm at most. There were no auxiliary light weapons on the artillery carriage, and the crew members had to carry light weapons for self-defense. For self-propelled artillery, if the enemy had already approached closely, the situation would be extremely urgent, and the use of light weapons would only be a last-ditch struggle. Due to the lightweight nature of the vehicle, a simple folding spade was installed at the rear of the artillery carriage to improve shooting stability. The spade could be folded up and retracted when firing to stabilize the vehicle. Due to the lack of spare parts, Germany only modified these six SPGs. The original Vickers MK.VI light tank weighed only 1.5 tons, and it was quite a stretch to convert such a small chassis into a self-propelled artillery. The weight of the L.F.H.16 howitzer alone was over one ton, and it was quite difficult for the Vickers light tank to withstand such pressure with such a lightweight chassis. After these six SPGs entered service, they were assigned to the German 227th Infantry Division and divided into two platoons. They initially stationed near Normandy and then moved to the Northern Front after the implementation of Operation Barbarossa, participating in the Siege of Leningrad. It turned out that the Vickers light tank chassis was very reliable. After being transported by rail to the battlefield, these six SPGs traveled thousands of kilometers under their own power and still maintained their combat effectiveness. During the early stages of the siege, they were not suitable for offensive operations due to their short range. Therefore, they were used for defensive operations, waiting for possible Soviet armored counterattacks and using high explosive shells to block the march routes, which played a significant role. They had encountered T-40 light tanks in combat, but the German army also found that the SPGs were practically ineffective against the Soviet KV-1 tanks. There were even reports that a T-40 tank was hit by 16 rounds but none penetrated its armor, indicating that only he ammunition hits were made. In 1942, these six SPGs were destroyed one after another, mainly by Soviet tanks. One was destroyed by a landmine explosion, and another was approached by Soviet infantry and destroyed with anti-tank rifles.